Hi kids, this is chapter two, lesson five, and this lesson is how to compare and order fractions, decimals, and percents. Uh, we're going to learn a couple of different strategies. Uh, the first thing though, uh, when we're comparing numbers, uh, one thing that we use are inequality symbols, and they look like this. And these symbols uh, represent, uh, one of them is less than and one of them is greater than. A lot of kids get these confused. So first thing I want to do is talk about, well, which one is which? Most of you remember that when you're comparing numbers, you can think of these symbols as a mouth and it's going to eat towards whatever is bigger. So this mouth is going to eat towards this number if it's bigger, this mouth is going to eat towards this number if it's bigger. So one thing you can do if you can't remember what these are just by looking at them on their own is plug in an example that's going to work. Here's what I mean by that. Make that symbol and what numbers could I put in that's going to make that work? Well. If I put a 5 on this side and I put a 3 on this side, that's going to be true. The mouth would eat towards the 5. In math, you read from left to right just like a book. So if I'm reading this from left to right, I would say 3 something to 5. Well, the only thing that works in, in words is to say 3 is less than 5. So that symbol... That symbol is less than. And again, if you can't remember just by looking at the symbols, plug in numbers that would make the symbol true and then read it from left to right. Here's another example. If I have that symbol, I can put in numbers that would work. Four and one, the mouth would eat towards the four. So if I'm translating that, reading across this direction, left to right, would be four is greater four is greater than one. So this symbol means greater than. So we're going to use those symbols today when we're comparing and ordering, uh, well, really comparing uh, fractions, decimals, and percents. So first example, compare 5 eighths and 7 twelfths. The first strategy that we're going to talk about is this. Use common denominator strategy. Use a common denominator strategy. Uh, to do that, I'm going to think about 8 and 12, my denominators. Uh, if I count by 8s, 8, 16, 24, 32, and if I count by 12s, 12, 24, the first match that I come to is 24. So I'm going to change 8s and 12s into 24s. So here's 5 8s, and again, how did I go from 8 to 24? That should look real familiar. We've done that over and over and over. I also have to multiply this by the same thing. I get 15 24ths. I'm going to do the same thing with 12ths, 7 12ths. I'm going to change that into 24ths. 
How did I go from 12 to get to 24? That was times 2. I need to do the same thing here. 7 times 2 is 14. Now I've got something that I know for sure. I've got common denominators. I've got 15 24 compared to 14 24 Now I know for sure this one is bigger. Uh, even though I changed both of these fractions to 24 I want to go back and compare my original fractions of 5 8 and 7 12 but now I know this one is bigger. So my answer, again, I'm going back to my original, 5 8 compared to 7 12 I know this one is bigger because 15 is greater than 14 when I've got my common denominators. 15 24 is more than 14 24 so the inequality would go like that. And here is my answer. Let's look at an ordering problem. How would we order from least to greatest? The following fractions, 4 fifths, 1 half, 9 tenths, and 3 fourths. 4 fifths, 1 half, 9 tenths, 3 fourths. Put those in order from least to greatest. I'm going to still use my common denominator strategy. I'm looking at all these denominators. 5, 2, 10, and 4, and a good resource would be your multiplication table. If I count by 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20. If I count by 2s, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. If I count by 10s, 10, 20, 30. If I count by 4s, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. My very first match for all denominators is 20. I'm going to change all of these into 20ths, and then I know for sure how they compare. So I'm going to start with 4 fifths. I'm changing that into 20ths. How did I go from 5 to get to 20? I did times 4. That's what I have to do to my numerator. 4 times 4 is 16. Next one, a half. I'm changing that into 20ths. How did I get there? 2 times 10. I have to do 1 times 10. I get 10 twentieths. 9 tenths. We're changing that into twentieths. 10 times 2 is 20. 9 times 2 is 18. And last fraction, 3 fourths. 3 fourths. 4 times 5 makes 20, 3 times 5 is 15. Now I'm comparing these, all 20ths. And now I can see clearly which one is the least. Look at my numerators. What's the smallest numerator out of all those is 10 20ths. But again, I'm comparing these fractions, so I'm going back to the original. I'm using these, but I'm going to go back to the original. So my smallest fraction out of all those is a half. My next smallest numerator is 15. It's 15 twentieths, but the original was 3 fourths. And the next is 16, but the original was 4 fifths. And the greatest is 18 out of 20, but the original was 9 tenths. There's my answer in order. Here's my proof, common denominator. So that's one strategy that you can use today is common denominator. Change things into common denominators. And then you can tell for sure which is bigger. Uh, strategy number two 
is to compare compare uh, by change everything to decimals. Here are some examples. 85%, we're going to compare that to 9 tenths. So this strategy is change everything to decimals. 85% Remember that percent means out of 100, so I know 85% means 85 out of 100. Going back to previous lessons, every fraction you can divide into a decimal. 85 divided by 100 on your calculator is 0 0.85. 9 tenths, fraction 9 tenths. I can change any fraction into a decimal by dividing numerator divided by denominator. 9 divided by 10 on my calculator, I get 0 0.9. Now, one thing after you have decimals is you may need to extend the decimal so that they have the same number of place values to compare them easier. I've got 0 0.85, two places. I only have one here. Well, I'm going to add that, and I can add, I can fill in blanks with zeros. So now I'm essentially comparing 0 0.85 to 0 0.90, and I can just think about, well, what's bigger, 85 or 90? And of course, 90 is greater. So I know that my inequality would go like that, but again, I'm going to go back and compare the originals. So I would write 85% is less than 9 tenths. One more. Order from least to grade, or let's see. Actually, this time I'm going to order from greatest to least. And my fractions that I'm going to order are 2 thirds, 2 ninths, 5 sixths, and 11 eighteenths. Uh, this time I'm going to use change to decimal strategy. All these fractions I'm going to divide them into decimals and then compare. So 2 thirds means 2 divided by 3. I can calculate any fraction, divide numerator divided by denominator into a decimal. 2 divided by 3, I get 0 0.666, but 6 is fill the screen. In, to show that a, a number repeats, I put a bar over it. So that means 0 0.66666, they repeat forever. Two nights. Numerator divided by denominator on my calculator. Two divided by nine turns into 0 0.22222, twos fill the screen, it repeats. 0 0.2 repeating. 5 sixths is another way of saying 5 divided by 6. I calculator 5 divided by 6, and I, my calculator says 0 0.83333. The threes keep repeating. I'm only putting a bar over that 3. 0 0.8333 would be indicated with a bar over the 3. Last one, 11 eighteenths. 11 divided by 18 on my calculator. Type that in. I get 
0 0.6111. The 1 repeats. I'm going to put a bar over just the 1. Now I'm ready to compare. I notice that this decimal has uh, two places. I can think of it the 0 0.6 repeating. I can make that go two places. I can extend this one. 0 0.2 repeating. If I make that go two places, it would be 0 0.22. I know this one would be 0 0.83, and the threes keep going. But if I'm just getting to where I can compare using two place values, make them all match, that's what I've got. Now I can clearly see which one is uh, the smallest, which one is the biggest, least, or greatest. And going back to the problem, it said greatest to least. So I look at all these. My greatest amount is this. But again, I'm going back to the original things that I'm comparing are these fractions. So the greatest would be 5 sixths. And I'm going greatest to least this time. The next greatest is this one, which was 2 thirds. The next greatest is 0 0.61, which was 11 eighteenths. And the least amount was this one, 0 0.22, which was 2 ninths. So there is my answer. On today's practice, you may choose um, either strategy, uh, common denominator strategy, or change to decimal strategy. Get a different color. Uh, you can use either one. You may use either strategy. Uh, just remember that after you, whichever strategy you're using, you do have to go back and compare the original things that we're comparing. Um, that's it for chapter two, lesson five. Um, I do have a hidden treasure for you. Uh, SpongeBob gave me the following puzzle for the treasure. This is it. So you have a fish right here that is swimming to the left. Okay, you can see that this fish is swimming this way. And the puzzle, the hidden treasure is, how can you make this fish swim to the right by, by moving only three sticks? Okay, there's a way to do it. How can you make that and the fish would look exactly the same. It would look like this, but it would be swimming that way. You can only move three sticks. So copy that fish if you're working on the treasure and work at how could you make it swim in the other direction by only moving three sticks. Please do the notes and the practice pages first before working on the treasure. I don't want you to focus on the treasure before getting your assignment done. That's it for today. I will see you next time.